more time to spend with you. And uh, again, it's going to be on the same lines, but just more deeper. So I'm here to uh, talk about programmatic trends. My name is Dimpi Yadav. I work at Zaxis, which is a programmatic division of Group M. And I've spent quite many years at Zaxis and at Group M. And I, I feel really honored that uh, in this industry, especially within India as a market, uh, and working with a lot of brands, I do have a bit of insights and an understanding of you know, what trends are going ahead with. And I really want to share the same with you. So when we talk about programmatic trends, one side we keep on saying that you know programmatic is evolving every day. So I think it's also true to say that even our trends are evolving every day and what we discussed today might not be the trend for tomorrow. That could be the standard operating method for tomorrow and we would have different trends coming up. So let's see what do we have in store uh, for programmatic advertising. Clearly, programmatic media is evolving, and when we say that programmatic media is evolving, four major channels for any advertiser when they plan are clearly television, digital media, print, and radio. But within digital media, we have programmatic, which is taking care of, uh, taking over in, way, uh, in, in, in a way of dominance uh, in terms of how do you allocate that money. And let's see what to expect more in remaining months of 2023. And very interestingly, we had launched this report with E4M itself, where we had talked about these uh, trends, and we could see them definitely taking shape and kind of you know, evolving very well. But the big bet of 2023 remains to be true and will be the biggest trend of 2024 as well. And let's see then what, what's next for us for next year. Not taking a lot of time, because we have very short time span, just a quick overview of what four uh, major channels that we have. We know that daily consumption of watching TV or OLV is increasing, definitely day by day. And post-pandemic, we could see that connected TV had gone at a very booming growth, which was 50%, and has further increased now, which is more. So when we talk about such kind of household subscriptions to OTT, such kind of connected TV adoption to happen, uh, a lot of consumption behavior has changed. So within all of that, we could also see very interestingly that investment in programmatic has increased. We can see digital is increasing, clearly as a result of change of consumer behavior, because our consumers are moving more towards online consumption uh, in terms of their habits post-pandemic, because they got used to it, it's time efficient, and all of that. But at the same time, if there's a demand where we are consumers stand, then of course, spends will also fall into the same line, which is why we see digital increasing and programmatic plays a wider role. So on the average of 33 to 35% adoption is there, expected to be increased to 42% and furthermore, followed by other markets the way we see them. So what to see and what to expect in programmatic in remaining months of 2023. Clearly, as we also just spoke about it in the panel before that, AI plays a bigger role, but AI is just not about optimizing a campaign that's beyond we have augmented reality, we have uh, generative AI, and we have whatnots, we have wearable durables, which is more around you know, capturing data sets in a real-time environment. But at the same time, we also see a lot of capabilities being generated within digital around creative aspect of it, which at the back of it also sits uh, alongside data. And when we talk about AI, clearly with proper controls in hand, AI is not just helping in activating of campaign, but starting from planning a campaign to delivering a campaign and even to an inciting. So next key point that we could see this year was again digital audio, which kind of started in 2019 for that matter, but really paced up post pandemic and audio took a space in itself properly. So when we talk about digital audio, we know it's not just about hearing music, etc. but we have a big segment of podcast that has come in picture. And when we talk about podcast, it is also being used in our industry. We can see a lot of shows happening on podcast. We can see a lot of learnings being shared on podcast. So even for advertiser, when they talk about digital audio, relevancy increases. It's not just a list of a music genre that they can see, but also podcasts where a lot of content consumption is happening. So for you to identify your audiences in terms of what relevancy do they have with the content, that really matches very well. In-app and in-gaming advertising is again what we could see. Uh, clearly, as a result of pandemic, uh, can't really focus more on the fact that as we all were locked in the home and we did not really have new content getting generated and shoots were not happening, we were locked in the house. So 
gaming is something that really took over, but also advertisers has taken over the space in terms of advertising well. What's interesting in gaming is to see that it's not just about you know in-app advertising or basic games, but we also have metaverse coming into picture, which is the trend which we'll just talk about in a short while. But also with that into picture, a lot of immersive experience with the help of AI is getting generated within the gaming landscape. So when you talk about advertising or programmatic, clearly to merge all of this together, you need to have platforms and technologies and tools that really helps you to cater the need where you can see that there's an audio coming into picture, there's a gaming landscape, then the video had been there already, which is evolving day by day. We have YouTube, OTTs, have, OTTs have become a part of it. We have smaller channels as well, which are now growing. And as you know, that festivity is just hitting India around the corner. Durga Pujo, uh, one of the biggest festival, which even for advertisers, especially TV folks will understand, right? That's one of the big, big, biggest segment that they see in parallel to sports. So similarly, when you talk about such big festivity that you're trying to cater, you need to look at all available channels and sources that you have at hand, where in-app and in-gaming advertising is also taking a huge share of it especially with a lot of bans that happened in India for uh, advertising to children, of course, around privacy clauses and all of that. But the first level of targeting to approach that audience is then in-app gaming, which is where you know that even if you're not able to target audiences below 18, but you know that with the help of content or the game selection that you do, it's landing to the right audience. So for brands like Kellogg's or any other brand which, which caters to the needs of kids for the product where you want to create a brand recall in the kids because they would eventually go back to their parents and decide on the buying factor. So gaming advertising really plays a bigger role for those brands and it really unlocks a lot of avenues for them. My interesting topic and the favorite one, which is the big bet of 2023. We had taken this bet last year in October that discovery commerce will be the one which will really shape the landscape. Initial two, three months, we could see still a lot of hiccups because when we talk about commerce, and let's talk about it, okay? When we talk about commerce, everybody just talks about keywords, right? That uh, commerce is equal to Amazon's and Flipkart of the world, which stands true, of course. But at the same time, when you go to Flipkart or Amazon, there are keywords that we type, and then we get to buy the product. But as an audience, there's so much that I'm doing. They have a lot of data insight about me. Not every time I'm buying a product, I'm just surfing. I'm just you know, looking at discounting. I'm also going at other brands, not only Amazon, but Flipkart, then many other brands like Group for grocery buying, et cetera. So commerce as a landscape is not just a few leading brands, but it spans everywhere. Even for, uh, for, for example, when you go for your regular medical test or checkups, you book that on an application, right? But eventually that's your buying pattern as well into the medical field. Similarly, when you're buying something for your daily household needs, your vegetables, that's your buying pattern into groceries. Hence, you have household, you have electronics. So every segment belongs to a commerce segment. So it's not just retail anymore. Within digital also, you have commerce shaping up. But we need to look at commerce in a perspective where the way we had digital when it boomed almost a decade ago, how it started or what we knew about digital was clearly just search ads. And we remember like, you know, making those long sheets of all keywords, brand keyword, competition keywords, industry keywords, adding in there. Then we had social media, and then we had a back then just click-based ad, right? Uh, media as a whole, which is today we call as programmatic media, video advertising, all of that, came in much later. We were just replicating ourselves onto traditional, which was maybe footsteps of TV or footsteps of print moving to digital, which is where we are today in commerce. So when we talk about commerce today, again, we are looking at keywords, which is a brand keyword. So for an example, if I'm a brand selling watches, I would want to go on Amazon and target everybody who's searching for my brand and show them offers to have a quick conversion. That's the lowest hanging fruit. But at the same time, I also want to go for audiences who are searching for my competition brands because I want to cater to them as well. But there is a very interesting fact to see that it's the same trend line of digital that we followed 10 years ago. So when we talk about commerce, that is still at a very nascent stage. But commerce will not just be a line item in a media plan. That's a huge channel in itself. 
where we are looking at it as an incremental channel driving any kind of matrix incremental to retail. So when we see post-pandemic, most of the advertisers have invested more of their monies on their online assets. Uh, the way uh, dear friend Mehrun just talked about Godrej, that they are creating immersive experiences. So they are putting their budgets investments on creating an immersive experience wherever there's not a possibility of a store. And many other brands are doing that, that they're not investing maybe a lot on retail. Post-pandemic, they've seen that change happening. And they're investing that kind of money on a digital landscape. But at the same time, for brands who are, I mean, whose bread and butter is just to sell every day, which is an e-com brand as well, uh, they don't really need that kind, of, that kind of retail shops, but they're going heavy on online shops for them. So when we talk about commerce, Commerce is also spanning everywhere in every category. So commerce is not just about top leading commerce brand, but even an app like PhonePay or a Big Basket and many more such applications, they all fall into the same portfolio. So for any brand, uh, say any automotive brand, you'll say that who will go on a con or commerce website and buy a car? Of course we don't. But the data and stat tells you that when a campaign is happening or when a car is getting launched, when they launch it on any kind, the, when they do the campaign on a, any kind of commerce app, they get great insights and they do also get bookings, which is directly on their website. Because what you also get from this channel is detailed insight. It's a buying pattern. It's not just a behavior or it's not just a browsing pattern for them or basis contextual ad, but furthermore deep dive. But what's still lacking in this entire landscape is that commerce is used only for the last funnel. As we know that the basics of marketing will not change. We know it's a funnel-based marketing camp, uh, concept. Top funnel goes for awareness, middle goes for consideration, and the last one goes for, of course, purchase, right? Today also, when we look at commerce, we kind of map it to the purchase funnel, the last one. But I really have this question to all of you in the room, that when you want to buy something, suppose I want to buy a TV, Am I sure on the day I think I want to buy a TV that which brand or which model will I buy? I am not. Else I will buy it similar, like same day, right? And personally, I have this problem with myself that a lot of, uh, I have a long list of jobs to do because I'm so fickle-minded, I'm not able to decide. And then I'm like, okay, I need to spend time to research about it and I never get that time. So clearly, all of us, I'm sure, we never know what to buy on that day. So first thought that comes to us is that we want to make a purchase of a certain thing. Of course, spaces, some requirement, etc. But we don't know what to buy, from where, and what are the features that we need to look for. Which is where comes research into place. Now, when I'm researching, even today, and again I want to ask you that, let's talk about a very basic product which is air conditioners, right? Different from Bombay, different for Delhi as a market, and I'm from Delhi. So of course, when I talk about air conditioner, humidity is not that a problem for me, but 18 degrees is also not working for me. I feel that hot because, I mean, that city is burning when it's like hot. But Bombay humidity becomes a major factor. So will it be right for a brand to advertise same concept, same content, Pan India? Maybe no, because content consumptions are different. So as an audience sitting in Delhi, my search in summers is not just around air conditioners, but many other products. Similarly, when it comes to Bombay, I mean, I can still, still see rains here. I was so happy, which we don't see in Delhi, right? It's just burning every day. Even taking a shower is like you think 10 times that you want to step into shower. It's that hot. So even purchase pattern, each region is going to have different. Now, when we talk about a campaign, you have clearly put commerce only in the last funnel, which is the purchase funnel. But there's so much of content consumption, browsing history on purchase, which is so different. For same category, air conditioner, but different for each market. So which is where we see that commerce needs to play a role, that it needs to be adopted into the strategy, even for the middle funnel, where you influence an audience, spaces their need, and you show them the right messaging with the right insights that you get. And today, we have a lot of partners, like Shopper is one of, one of them, who does data scrapping, who has data from all these leading, uh, you know, commerce site, and they tell you that in your uh, category, these competitions are present on XYZ websites, and your share of voice is XYZ percent, your share of se shelf is XYZ percent, your share of discounting is such. So as a brand, then you can decide 
that okay if my discount is say heavy on flipkart but my share of voice is heavier on amazon what kind of monies do i need to put where and can i change my strat so what i see today is i really see money being flowed from one partner to another but that's not the right strategy you don't have to put your money or pick and choose that which commerce platform to choose but need to see that which commerce platform requires what kind of strategy the way we do in video advertising today you don't put money is from youtube to ott you you bifurcate it with different goals with different objective similarly within commerce as well you need to bifurcate it with different goal and different objectives and one thing which we all are missing when it comes to commerce clearly that it has to move from last funnel and it has to be mapped to all funnels which is starting from awareness to the bottom funnel because where are we in that stage when a person is thinking which brand to buy where i don't know which brand to buy that is a stage where i'm discovering that's why we are calling this solution at group ms discovery commerce that because for us commerce is not just retail or a conversion method but also to let an audience discover your brand with the right messaging and the right requirement what's next clearly in interest of time uh, the focus area for next year is definitely going to be navigating a cookieless world where the benefits of cookieless future clearly you know brings on the fact that whenever there's a disruption in the market or the industry we see new avenues coming in that's how we learn that's how we evolve and i'm seeing a lot of discussions happening on contextual so a lot of partners which are providing contextual targetings and better ways of operating say 5 years ago in a way kind of faded off but i'm seeing them surfacing again and they will be at the boom because contextual targeting will not just be about a uh, keyword targeting but further more in depth to talk about context of the ad for an example the way i heard atika saying the same stuff that i'm doing a contextual ad but i don't want to as an advertiser see myself on that page because the relevance is less so let me ask this question to you when you do your ad suppose it's a it's a confectionery brand maybe a chocolate brand you would want to post your ads on any page which talks about hunger that's the relevancy eventually but if there's a page that talks about people dying out of hunger you would never want to have your ad on that page but it's a it's a tool right all that is doing is it it saw your keyword list which had hunger in it had complete relevancy and showed your ad but eventually you are in the news next day and you're being shamed for having your ad on top of that so what you need there is an ai that reads the context and relevancy of the page and the semantics of it end to end and then it decides whether your ad should be on this page or not because you can't put hunger as a negative keyword it is of high relevance to you but that page was a complete negative relevance to you so such tools will come up and they are coming up there we have a lot of partners coming up but yes next year we'll see a boom of such partners because even the leading partners like ias they are building their stack and they are strengthening it much more we have double verify and many more who are building solutions around that and also navigating a cookieless world is not just about contextual targeting or other ways but a very high focus on first party data and we have seen our advertisers advertisers moving that road um so we will have to wait for our report to get launched for this year so i can't reveal the number but yes there's a uptake in terms of adoption of first party data and activation of data the way prabhakar had confirmed in the panel that they activate their first party data now in the campaigns so generally first party data used to be activated only for the bottom funnel conversion but now that's also being utilized for the awareness campaign to understand the quality cpm that you get qcpm and maybe then use that same audience and pool to have a uh, to kind of you know multiply that using similar audiences and many more other methods that you have but definitely navigating a cookieless world will come up in many different form where you will be focusing on first party data but with the help with the focus on first party data you have to also build the rooms which keeps your data safe and activates it and uh, again you know further brings brings it back uh just lastly so of course the future of omni channel marketing will be in high focus area when you're talking about so many channels coming up audio is there we have in app gaming advertising already at boom video advertising is kind of increasing more and more especially with the fact that rural as a market which is not contributing much towards video consumption is also going so higher and we know that uh, rural in the market while you do tv ads clearly yes you understand a spot is getting played but how do you know that there's no electricity cut which is still there so yes ad got played spot was there on tv but there's no electricity 
But when you talk about mobile handsets, it is, I mean, they can only use it when that's operating well, which is where we see handsets getting and mobile internet penetration getting deeper in rural now, which is adding more to video consumption. So for an example, and I was discussing with one of my Google partner yesterday in a strategy for a, for a tire brand, I'll not name the brand again, uh, that the brand is doing a lot of you know, media activation within uh, urban because the tires are costly, certain range, but they also produce tires for cycles, for motorbikes, which are cheaper range for them, but that has massive consumption in rural. So rural packages needs to be then built, but that's becoming a subset of video advertising, a different targeting method, but again, that's increasing there. So when you talk, talk about all of these things, clearly, uh, when you say that I'm deploying programmatic for cost efficiency, you need to see that you can't show your ad to same audience three times on different channel. Three channel, three frequency makes it nine. That's not efficiency, that's duplication, which is where you get programmatic into place that helps you uh, curb that. And I'm really proud to share that most of the campaigns that we do at Zaxxis, it's already in activation, it's been a year now. So as I said that, uh, the trend that we showed in 2023, January, is now in a way becoming a standard operating method. But what's, uh, okay, I missed that slide here, but I'll just talk about that. But what you'll also see upcoming this year apart from that is also voice entering into audio and everywhere else. So right now when you're running, I mean, running any kind of uh, application in audio, say Spotify or any other application to listen to music, it's just a music list to you. Or ad gets placed in between, you hear it, but you're driving, I mean, majority of the time you're driving when you listen to this or you're at home, but occupied into something else. I've rarely seen somebody just sitting and listening to music, but yes, if somebody does that, that's the most beautiful thing you can do, right? Enjoying yourself, but not really a lot of the cases that happens. Uh, so when, when I say that voice will enter, that means that voice will start talking to you, even in, in a form of display ad or a video or an audio ad. The AI will start talking to you. For an example, if it's a pizza day-to-day -day 101, as we know, BOGO offers happen. It will talk to you that uh, today it's a BOGO offer. Should I place an order for you? And basis your commands is going to show you another message now. It's going to talk to you. That, okay, should I take you to a landing page? Should I show you an ad later? Should I send you a message? And immediately you'll, send, you'll get a link to buy in your phone, right? So that kind of landscape is coming up, and we have such partners, Instrumatic, is one of them who are entering the space. But definitely with a lot of disruption that just happened in the industry, they're also updating their stack. But if I have to give you three key takeaways or the trends where 2024 will just be out there, commerce, discovery commerce, because it's not just a bottom funnel, but has to be a solution which is end-to-end. -end. Voice, which you know is in a form of an AI. We can also call that as a programmatic creative element where creative goes programmatic beyond just an experience of clicks, but goes there. And I'll just take one more minute when I'm talking about click. Uh, I'm sure most of you, you have children at home and you would rarely see them typing on your phone. They're smarter than us. And I could see my nephew doing that and my mom, who's 55, who just learned using phone like maybe a few years ago. And they both were, you know, fine. And, and she knows everything. She can find everything for me just by using voice. And I could see it there that this new generation, which is coming, they, they will skip clicks completely. So there's a, there's a generational shift that's just gonna happen. And that generational shift, which is leading to a lot of voice consumption by this new generation, will also open doors for advertisers. Similarly, in gaming, when you see, uh, I again saw him playing Roblox, which is some game I have no idea. I, all I know about is Mario, okay? So, but Roblox is very much 3D, kind of a structure where they create their own world as a group and they start playing into it, which is metaverse, if you look at it. That's the same concept. With these kids, he's 10 years old and he's playing it from last two years and he's super fast. These kids are playing that game which we are calling at its metaverse today. So just understand that not more than three years or four years down the line, you know, what era are we entering when it comes to advertising? Clearly, AI will become the norm, and what we're going to see is AI taking over in terms of experiences, which will be in the form of maybe audio ad talking to you because they will not click, they will not do that. They're, they're very street smart. Or in a form of 3D, where metaverse and augmented reality will really play a bigger role. So I feel 
uh, as advertisers and as marketeers, we need to start thinking in that lens, start, think, start going that way. Because the new generation, which will be called as consumers and audiences, they're already in that generation. So it's time for us as an advertiser to start building solution which matches them. Thank you.